to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Sherry Uppin and I will be your host today. Now we have a very, very special treat for you today. We're interviewing one of South Florida's most talented actresses, one of my favorite people. But before that, let's meet our panel. Bill Hirschman is an arts journalist and the founder of FloridaTheaterOnStage.com. Carol Fantel is an award-winning musical director working all over the country, maybe the world. <laughs> Our guest today is a Carbonell winner and Silver Palm recipient. If you go to theater in South Florida, I am sure you have seen her on the stage. And I might say loved her. And you are a fan, as we all are. Her name is Mallory Newbro. And I hope I pronounced that right, Mallory, but you'll tell me that. <laughs> Welcome, Mallory, to Spotlight Thank on the you. Arts. Thank you. And you pronounced that perfectly. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Mallory, uh, in case there's one person in South Florida that has not seen you or doesn't know who you are and your incredible talent, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I, I'm from Annapolis, Maryland, originally. And I floated down to the Florida around maybe 2014, 2015, um, and I actually was living in Lake Worth, and I was walking by the Lake Worth Playhouse, and I saw that they were doing cabaret. Ah. And I said, oh, I will be playing Sally Bowles. <laughs> yep. And so I auditioned. I, I auditioned there, and Clayton Phillips was the director mm -hmm. at Lake Worth Playhouse, and he hired me to play Sally Bowles. Immediately. Oh, he said he knew right when I walked in the door, because I seem to make some sort of presence when I enter an audition room, <laughs> usually jabbing. Um, but he, and I, I just had so, such a great time, because it had been a little bit of, a little while since I had done any theater. Um, I graduated school in 2012, and so this is about three years after graduation, and I was just what ready. What school did you I went to Ithaca College, mm -hmm. and it was, oh, I had the time of my life there. It was such a wonderful, training program and it really was fate that I ended up there because I didn't quite realize when I applied for school that Ithaca was a pretty tough school to get into. I had no idea. I was, I had just, um, I actually was working at the Renaissance Festival since I was 13. Uh, not as a performer, as a coffee girl, a wench. My goodness. <laughs> I was a pretzel girl at one time. But um, my boss, his name mm -hmm. is Victor Smith, he said, Mallory, what, what is that stuff you like to do? I was like, musical theater, Victor. <laughs> musical theater. He goes, okay, yeah. I think the I think where I'm from, the school, they 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 do a good job of that there. I go, okay. What, what school is he? he? Goes Ithaca. I said Ithaca. Well, that's a weird name. Okay. And I went I went home and I, I was on the Common App because I was applying for colleges. I did the drop down and Ithaca was on there. I was like, great, <laughs> applied. And and, and got like, in. Well, they sent you the letter and they're like, oh, you have to audition and this is a whole thing. And I'm like, okay, great. And I found out they auditioned in D.C. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to have mom and dad hike me up to upstate New York. And um, so I auditioned right outside D.C. It was my first college audition. There was one man in the room. His name was Lee Byron, chair of the department at the time. And I went in with awful material, <laughs> like my audition material. I don't think the songs were that bad choice, but my monologue choices were a little. I wasn't aware that it's a, probably a good thing to read the play mm -hmm. <laughs> from the mo If you choose to do a monologue from a play, it's a good idea to read the play. And I chose to do um, Chekhov. I, play, I did a monologue, Nina's monologue at the end of The Seagull, having never read the play. And, okay. <laughs> and it was quite obvious right from the start. He's like, well, this girl has talent, but she's got no idea what she's doing. <laughs> but you had talent, and that, that's, that's what I think he saw. I think he saw success. that there was some sort of hope. And because of that man, he accepted me into the program. I don't know if I had went up to the school to audition in front of the whole panel of mm -hmm. teachers. I don't know if that, that kind of audition would have got me into the school, but I, with that one audition, I did get into Ithaca, and um, I, I it didn't have a dance audition, which also might have been reason why I got in. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> oh, but that's, that's not true. We just recently worked together, and well, you. I, I can dabble in the dance. show with dance. Yes. <laughs> you know, we have a little surprise for you. We have a wonderful um, roll in right now. Uh, oh, great. A little tape of something that you've done, because mm -hmm. seeing is believing. <laughs> you know, Mallory can talk about herself, but if you see it, then you'll know. And this is from Janice Joplin mm -hmm. from Beehive. Is, and if that's what it is, let's let's see it. She 
Anybody watching that will know. I think you'll get a lot of jobs from that. <laughs> I, 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 can tell you, I had I had seen you in other things before and was aware of your name. Mm -hmm. But that show was I remember everybody in the audience went, Who is that woman? <laughs> and it, it it just blew everybody away. I think it's interesting though that you've played so many different kinds mm -hmm. of roles in so many different kinds of musicals. You did Bette Midler mm -hmm. uh, a, a few a, a year or so ago. Do you have to bring a different mindset when you do different roles? Uh, do you have a different process? Of course, I think so. And and it really was a gift to be given those opportunities to go from just totally black and white roles, especially. Janice into Belle, like those are polar Beauty opposites. And the Beast. Beauty and the Beast, exactly. Right. So I, and those, that rarely happens to an actor where you get to play two such contrasting characters right after each other. I, they were both at the same theater. So I did Beehive right, right before Beauty and the Beast. So it was really cool to have, to, to, for people to be able to say, oh, Belle, that was Janis Joplin, that Janis Joplin was Belle. And for people to be like, really, no way. And uh, I think that my approach to the characters for sure would be different, especially when um, playing an icon like Janis, playing uh, Bette Midler. I, I actually, for my preparation for those roles, I kind of dive deeply into research. I kind of get, I'm all about it. I ordered. There's several wonderful uh, novels written, one by her sister from about Janis Joplin and mm -hmm. some by her fans, mm -hmm. and, um, and I read all of them. And I just wanted to know her, and I watched a beautiful documentary called Little Girl Blue, and I just try to like seep as much as I can into knowing who, who especially when uh, wanting, to, uh, wanting to honor and, and pay homage to such a great incredible icon that made such an impact in this world and so the research that I did for Janice was kind of similar to what I did for Bette where I did the same thing I ordered mm -hmm. these novels and I I wanted to know about who they were so Bette that Midler? I could Bette Midler uh, yes and that was in Bette and Barry yeah. from Bathhouse to Broadway you know Carol mm -hmm. I was just thinking uh, Mallory did all this research but didn't we live the, the era <laughs> 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 Uh, we, I think yeah. we, we, we live that uh, Janis but Joplin see, and Bette Midler. Difficult. And it's in, in both of these is a lot of our uh, audiences mm -hmm. are seeing characters and people that they know well. Yes. And that's an extra challenge because they go, uh, well, yeah, they've got that, but that's not what I remember. That's there was right. a show about, oh, the big show about uh, Linda Baines Johnson that played. Mm -hmm. And no matter how good the actor was, we go, well, that, I remember that's not him. Mm. So how do you deal with that? How do you go, well, you can never be exactly what our memories are? Exactly. Um, but I, I will say how exciting it was to finish a, sh a beehive, a performance of beehive, and Jan doing Janice, and to have people come up to me and say, "I was at Woodstock. I was there. <laughs> That's right. I got to see her." And and they would like grab my arm and say, "You just, you, you really were, huh. you were her." And that gives me just goosebumps to know that you know I can. It it, it infects people yeah. like that. And to and to also, I had a I had a challenge performing uh, the great lady Bette Midler. Uh, Miss Devine herself in Wilton Manors, where everyone knows who oh, Bette Midler yes. is, right. and they know her back and forth, yeah. and they know all about her. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to make sure that I paid tribute in the best way possible, and Michael Leeds did a great job writing that script so that uh, we could do that. And it was just, and of course I was working with Michael Ursua as uh, Barry Manilow, and that was just so much fun. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, how, how do you 
how do you properly pay homage? How do you how do you become that person? And I just felt like the more that I knew about who they were and the life that they lived, the better I could communicate that. Here is where I'll stay, standing at the end of the road, to boys waiting for my new friends to come. I don't care if I'm hungry or poor. I'm going to get me some of them, because you got to have friends. I am so excited that I was able to be there for um, every performance of Janice yeah. because I was your music director for that. Oh and it my was, goodness. It oh, was and she kept me so calm. Oh yeah, she kept me well, so calm. I was nervous, wasn't I? I was a, yes, sometimes a nervous wreck. <laughs> it, was, it was exciting to be in the moment at mm -hmm. every performance and I thank you for your preparation and your research and, and your passion. Yeah. And I was going to say that, that those experiences, um, you know, early on, not knowing how to prepare and not knowing what material to choose, right. really, um, really left their mark on you because you are extremely prepared when you walk into auditions now. Mm -hmm. And um, the best auditions to the best of my abilities, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, definitely by the time the contract rolls around, but auditions, I do try to prepare as well as I can. And I try to cater uh, everything that the audition material that I choose to to make it apropos to whatever character I'm kind of mm -hmm. shooting for. I, I mm -hmm. will say that we in the audition room appreciate that yeah. preparation because um, we, you always bring something fresh in. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because um, some people just keep using the same things from their audition book for every, every single audition and they don't necessarily uh, relate or, or apply. So um, what, what you do to prepare is definitely appreciated. Yes, I actually remember um, a couple years ago auditioning for Fun Home at Zoetic Stage, which was an excellent production if anybody got mm -hmm. to see it. Um, just the, the girls and everyone in that show was just incredible. Um, but I had never auditioned for Fun Home before and I knew the storyline. And I found a song from, I think it was Big, the musical. And it was actually a song that the boy sang. And it was about, he was like, um, a kid who was an adult, but he was like with a woman in bed. And so I chose to take that song mm -hmm. in particular and make it as if I was talking about my girlfriend. And so that I could, so to make it just like fit, just a, a fitting piece for Fun Home or something. And so I, I try to do things like that every single time to, because the words were so appropriate for, to, that, that, and that, that's what mattered for me. It was like, I, I think I can communicate this message regardless of whether or not it's from the show or whatnot. And I also do that sometimes. If, if the audition notice doesn't specify, if it doesn't say you can't sing a song from the show, if I know that I can sell it and I know that it's what I want, and it, particularly if it's a role that I want, I will sometimes go head on mm -hmm. and come in with a song that I want. You know. Well, we have another example uh, <laughs> of a wonderful, wonderful tape from, um, I think this one's from Beauty and the Beast. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, here it is. Here's where she meets Prince Charming, but she won't discover that it's him till chapter three. Can you imagine? He asked me to marry him. Oh. Me, the wife of that boorish, brainless Madame Gaston, can't you just see it? Madame Gaston, his little wife, oh, my heart's far, far away, home. Brilliant was that. Did that bring back some amazing yes. memories? Oh, some of the best times of my well, this life. This is why we love you. Now, <laughs> tell us about uh, some of the. Um, do we still use the word, the expression, straight roles? Yes. Mm. Yes. Uh, because you've been speaking about your uh, musical career. What about the other side of Mallory? Yes, I. I am very. I was very, very blessed to have the opportunity to do some plays down here. My first play that I did was down at Area Stage. I did an Octoroon, which is an incredible play, just intense. It's, it's, if anybody hasn't read it, please do. Brian, Brian Jacob Jen Jenkins is the playwright. And um, we had a great, great team down there. And so I went from that play, um, and then I also, 
had the privilege of doing Equus at Palm Beach Drama Works, which was, oh, it was such a, such an incredible experience as an actor. I learned so, so much. I also uh, felt a little uh, nervous. I felt a little uncomfortable being this musical actress who's now I was in. I ask you that. Yes, it was, a, it was kind of a lot mm -hmm. of pressure to be at Palm Beach Drama Works and you know, in a play with these big dogs. And it, it almost felt like I wasn't doing enough with my words when really mm -hmm. I was doing plenty. But because I was so used to having music underscore what I'm doing and tell me what to do and where to take things, it was kind of like I, I, was, uh, I got a little frozen, an actor's block in a way, to be like, am I doing this right? Am I, mm. am I doing enough? Am I, am I saying this correctly? It was because it was almost like they took my notes, my music notes away and I didn't know how to talk anymore. But I kind of moved past that and because I, I had the help of other actors in the stage, in the show, to say, you need to stop saying that you're just a musical theater actress. Exactly. You need to stop categorizing yourself like that and just think of yourself as an actor. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I loved that. You I've know? got to ask, um, you did Equus and you also did Hair. Yes. And there's a commonality in those there two shows. There is. And <laughs> people never seem to want to ask about this. How do you handle when the yeah. part requires nudity? You know, I was, I, of course in college I saw uh, my, my sophomore year at Ithaca College, they did Metamorphoses, mm -hmm. a great play, beautiful. It has a pool on stage. Right. First thing, lights up, they had two girls come up butt naked out of the pool. And they just got up <laughs> and, they, and they very slowly, they walked the parameter of the pool and it was a theater in the round, circle and round. So it was like really intense moment because it's silent. And they just had naked girls, just, just two of them, walk very slowly around the pool and then exit. And it was a really intense moment and I just remember thinking, Gosh, I need to be ready to do that. You know, I need to be, if I'm gonna really do this as an actor, I need to be ready to be able to do anything I need to do on stage. And I remember always saying, I, I hope to face that challenge one day. And of course, when hair rolled around, I was like, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> and especially it made it easy because other people were doing it and it was just a flash moment. Right. So that's de definitely different than a seven minute scene where you're not having any clothes well, it on. it makes it easy because you look like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. I, I was, I, it still doesn't make you nervous, it still makes you nervous. Yes. And, um, and the Equus, it was like a very slow, very slow removal of the clothing, but it was very tasteful. And, and the process to, in rehearsals mm -hmm. doing it, they were very professional about having, about even speaking about it, and then eventually, like, we had a closed rehearsal where it was just me and the actor playing Alan, and then we did it with, like, one time with all clothes on, and then eventually the next day, or maybe two mm -hmm. days later, it was just undergarments. And I've always been very free and very open and very okay with, let's, let's do whatever we have to do for theater, and uh, the other actor was very comfortable as well, so I've never actually come into, like, any sort of roadblock. It was a nerve-wracking, though, to, to be have everything bearing all for so long yeah. in the light. It was like, it, but it was very, I think, um, a hurdle that I'm glad I crossed and had the privilege of doing so. It was a gift, And I in think. a great play. Oh, in a great play with a great director and a great mm -hmm. theater. It was just, oh, what a fabulous play that was. It was, and, and we, luckily, it, it, was, it was amazing because we got to, I got to watch that play every night. They oh. sat us on stage, and so we were there in it every single night, so it was just, incredible experience there. It really, really was. Well, you know, so far you've been uh, there at the right time. You're prepared. Mm -hmm. I mean, I worked with you. Carol has worked with you. Your work ethic is uh, very unusual. You are very prepared. And uh, also, it was just, just a little story I had said to Mallory. Uh, I recently directed her, um, do you juggle? <laughs> and she said, yes, I do. Yes. And she juggled. Uh, do you do uh, uh, splits? And she said, yes, yep. I, I do a split. <laughs> and uh, then I think I asked you if you did a cartwheel, but we decided yeah, not we to. We cut the cartwheel. Yeah. But tap dancing, we got the time step. Tap dancing, everything. <laughs> yeah, you are a, a young actress of all seasons. Oh, and I you. need to congratulate you on that. Thank Mallory, you. tell us about your latest project, Island Song. Island Song. I am working with uh, Measure for Measure Theater Company, and we are doing Carner and Gregor's Island Song, which is it's a very, very new musical theater, pop rock kind of musical, and um, it's a great, great company of of actors that are so. It's it's been a little while since I've worked with um, a, a little bit of a younger crowd, and they're so enthusiastic. How young? Would they be? Younger I'm than you. I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about like those like. 
20 to 25s and they're like <laughs> and they're and they're like ravenous about working like mm -hmm. the other night we were in rehearsal and we weren't being used and we were all piled into a uh, a practice room with the accompanist who wasn't being used and we were all going through all of our music we we're going to figure out if we got this memorized and we're going through all the ensemble numbers and I'm thinking what willingness what wonderful willingness that Great. these people have to to be so like ready to do this and that so the company that I'm working with is really really supportive of each other and they're really positive and they're really really great so I think we're gonna put on a, a great show and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it the character I'm playing is a very funny one so I'm, 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 I'm excited to have a, a comedic role once again great. and I kind of just played a comedic role in Dracula mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that, that was, was oh, terrific. that was amazing I, uh, I worked with Gordon Greenberg and Steve Rosen and they created this incredible you know, very 39 Steps-esque, uh, young Frankenstein-like uh, re rendition of Dracula that was, was just- at the Maltz. The Maltz Jupiter Theater, mm -hmm. and they, they had all the characters on stage. Was that Wayne Switching. Baguette? Yes. Also, yeah. That's who I worked with, Wayne. And he, oh, he had a job in that. He was twisting around like a maniac. Uh, <laughs> he had to go from one to the other really, really fast. But we all had multiple characters to play. And I got to play a man on stage for the second time, which was great. The first time being 1776. <laughs> George Washington, as well as the soldier, um, the courier. But I, I just love getting those opportunities to Ha show show a vast spectrum of abilities like Wayne has and like mm -hmm. we, all those actors in that show had. It was just the the writers really did a great job of catering to our abilities in a way, as did you, as mm -hmm. in our production of To Life Too. Right. You really centered in on uh, what like our wheelhouses are, our fortes, and mm -hmm. in that production we just did, To Life Too, was so successful because we were all so comfortable in our performances. Yeah, but somebody like you, just, I mean, you know, there's nothing that, that you, you cannot do, and, 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 and you heard it here. A pirouette is quite difficult for me. One or two or three, all pirouettes Well, are. if you practice, I'll ask you yeah. the, the next time. <laughs> well, uh, the turning is a little bit of an issue. Mallory, how would you uh, suggest new, new uh, entries to uh, the South Florida theater scene get, get started? Oh, I great see. question. Yes, what a great question. Um, and I have like a couple students that uh, are breaking in and they're, they're auditioning for Bach or they're auditioning for uh, these arts high schools, which mm -hmm. Florida is so lucky, lucky, lucky to have, especially being public and not having to pay for, just incredible. Maryland did not, did not have any of that. Um, but as far as like people just breaking into this theater scene, I think doing, I kind of climbed the, the ladder as well. I did, lucky enough, Mm -hmm. Through Clay Clayton Phillips is the one who took me from Lake Worth Playhouse to, he said, you better get your butt over to the Wick Theater, I want you in my show. Was he your mentor? He is. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, he, um, and he said, you show up at this theater at this time, I want you in my show, audition. And I said, okay. And that was Curtains, and that was my first professional yeah. gig down here. And um, he, then after I got my start and learned, gosh, what an incredible theatrical community we have down here. It's very much a, it's very, it's a small world, mm -hmm. but it's a supportive environment and every, it's a family and everybody knows each other and I, I started to learn this slowly but surely. One of the things that really helped me was the, Carol, the workshop, the Michael Leeds, the Unifieds. When South Florida Theater League does Unifieds, they have the Michael Leeds and Carol Fantel workshop where mm -hmm. you really get the rundown of this is how you do it. And then I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it helps you prepare in so many different ways. And then of course FIP does as well. So any sort of unifieds and any sort of classes because the resources here in South Mallory, Florida my are darling, just crazy. Mallory, my darling, we can go on all day. Yeah. We have a half hour show. I think Mallory <laughs> can, run, can run one half hour all by herself <laughs> without anybody <laughs> asking any questions. Yes. I was going to ask you what was on your bucket list and if we we're going to lose you to New York, Broadway, <sighs> which is next. Yes, I. New York, I do have on my horizons. It's okay. definitely there, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I am going to take advantage of the resources that South Florida has to properly prepare myself for the city. I, I need to prepare myself financially as well, but um, the th resources we have down here as far as training is concerned, I want my book to be on point. I want my two left feet to get a little sorted out. <laughs> and 
well, you beyond know that, I think that. All you need is your book and your <laughs> yes. paperwork because you are ready. You really are. <laughs> and I you. think we would all agree to that. Mm -hmm. I know that we could go on all day uh, with uh, with this program, but unfortunately they give us... Well, that's actually the whole thing. <laughs> oh, okay. I do <laughs> want to thank our panelists for being on the show today and of course our wonderful, talented guest, Mallory Newbro. And did you know that Spotlight on the Arts is a community program, so please let us know what you think. Viewers out there can drop us a line at spotlightonthearts at BrowardSchools.com. And while you're at the computer, which I'm sure you are many times, <laughs> check out our YouTube site. All our past episodes are archived there. Just go to YouTube and do a search for Spotlight on the Arts. Also check out floridatheateronstage.com to see reviews of shows and a calendar of shows. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, as our mentor, Iris Acker, would say, go, go to, to the, the theater. theater. <laughs>